Well, we're here uh, at Overland Expo West 2022. It's day two. It is still windy, of course, um, but it's all good. We're having a lot of fun. I'm here at the iCamper booth with Devin, who's a digital marketing specialist for iCamper. Um, so Devin, uh, you know, obviously you guys are well known in the Overland space. Right, you yeah. guys make some excellent products, some really innovative stuff. Um, what do you guys have that is new this, this time of year? So we're kind of sitting in front of one of our newest uh, kitchen system products right here. It's called the Disco Series. Mm -hmm. We've had it out now for a couple months. So there's quite a few out in the wild, a couple hundred of them out in the wild right now. Um, and it's a modular cooking system. So um, basically you can use it as a, um, a burner with a skillet on top. You can remove the skillet and use a different pot and uh, pan that we'll have out in a little bit. Um, or you can use it over a fire and uh, kind of use it the more traditional way. So you don't need to use a fuel source for that one. Cool. And yeah. this, this tripod extends up pretty high, right? So you can actually hang a pot from underneath yeah, it. And right. I think, so I had the pleasure of using one of these recently. I, I was out on the North Rim with a couple folks. Mm -hmm. um, and the burner on it was just ripping. Like we cooked a lot of food really easily. Um, but I heard that like, maybe some people have figured out a way to like mount a camera on the tripod too yeah so <laughs> that's kind of like a little easter egg that we had on there there awesome. is actually yeah. an, cool. an area that you it, can man. mount Thanks basically that. like Absolutely. a traditional yeah. Yeah. Uh, tripod uh, threaded mount on there so if you wanted Very to cool. you could so i love just having that like versatility to do so many things in in one thing right because we're limited on space in our vehicle so anything that can fill fulfill multiple purposes i feel like is always really valuable right um, and that's that's like the point of it is something yeah. that's modular and you can break it down into a small form factor. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you can use it in, you know, multiple different ways. So, so. definitely. Yeah. So you guys also have a new awning out, right? Yes, we do. Tell me a little bit about that. So it's called the ExoShell 270. Um, so it's a 270 degree awning. And basically the main feature of it is that it has an anodized aluminum shell over it. So instead of having like a more traditional like PVC or fabric case over it, it's a hard shell. So basically protects it from, you know, scrapes and branches and stuff like that. Um, and it's basically, we created it with a, a darker canvas. So it blocks out, you know, even more sunlight. With that. Nice. So, Do you know off the top of your head what the weight is on that awning? The weight of it is uh, 66 pounds. Okay. Um, it is a freestanding awning. Um, but when it is windy like today, um, we had a 50 mile an hour gusts yesterday and it held up just fine. So we're doing some product testing while we're out Sweet. here too. Yeah, the perfect way to demo it. <laughs> exactly. And then um, tell me uh, just really quickly, also you guys have uh, a new RTT, right? Yeah, so we actually have an entirely uh, new line of rooftop tents. Well, new iterations of some current tents that we had um, and then a new, completely new rooftop tent, which is the X-Cover 2.0 Mini. Okay. We had the X-Cover before and now we have a mini version of that. And okay. then we have our SkyCam 3.0, which is our four person tent and the SkyCam 3.0 Mini, which okay. is the two person tent. So the XO Mini, is that the new new? So yeah, the X-Cover 2.0 Mini. X-Cover 2.0 Mini. Yeah. And what's what's the story with that? So. The, the Sky Camp is the hard shell design and the X cover is a, a kind of a hybrid hard shell soft shell design and that one has crossbars on top. So if you're into the kind of adventure sport type of things, if you're mountain biking, if you're kayaking, paddle boarding, you can put that on top of your rooftop tent. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for giving me the rundown on all this Absolutely. new stuff and uh, yeah, awesome. I hope you guys have a great event. Thanks. All right. So we're here in the DIY featured vehicle section of Overland Expo and we like this area for a handful of reasons. One, it really showcases what you can do as an individual, which is really cool. It's a great place to find inspiration and see that, you know, while there are lots of capable 4x4 shops out there to help you with a build, you can do some really cool stuff on your own. And uh, we're starting here with this 1981 40 Series Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, it's an Australian model, so it's right-hand drive. It previously served as a emergency services vehicle. Uh, but as you can see, it is like a luxury uh, boutique uh, like hotel room now. It's just gorgeous. It's like hardwood floors, hardwood cabinetry. Uh, it's got these awesome fold out sides that create some, uh, some shade, some awning type things. Um, but it's just like so thoroughly thought out, the design, the color scheme. We've got like potted plants. Uh, it's just so unique, it's so cool. Um, it does have some pretty solid infrastructure for traveling too. Um, it's got a whole 
lithium power system down here with some Battleborn batteries um, and some uh, Victron components. So um, that's all pretty high quality gear and produces uh, plenty of power for doing stuff off grid based on what I think most people need. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is not some extreme like rock crawling vehicle. It's just beautiful. It's restored wonderfully. It's really tasteful and we love it. It's got our attention. So I'm here with Rick and Kathy Howe's Tiger CX 4x4. And this rig has been all over the world. Rick and Kathy have been traveling for the past 20 years. And it's so cool to see them back in the US. And uh, I attended their panel on traveling through Europe and learned so much. So very cool to see this, this rig here. So here we are with a truck that might actually look familiar to some of you because it was recently featured on the Expedition Portal uh, classified section. And I'm here with the owner, Antonio, uh, who is an engineer and you did this yourself, right? Yeah, you, with you my and wife, wife and, and a few friends of ours, they, they did help us a lot, of course, in doing this. Yeah. So how, how long did this whole project take you to get to the stage that's at right here? Yeah, when we started, uh, the platform was already in a, in a super single with suspensions, some more, more or less adjusted. So that's where we started from. Uh, and that was October last year. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So quick. quick. <laughs> so less than a year. Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. That's yes. incredible. Yeah. And so Richard knows a lot more about vehicles than I do. And he spotted this and he recognized it and he kind of talked me through it. And you know, the old body style Fords are yeah. super cool. Um, what is it about this platform that you like and why did you choose this for your build? What? Number one, what we want to do is to travel uh, all over the world, of course, and uh, the single most important thing that you have to consider when you go in, uh, I would say, less developed countries is that you cannot find quality fuel, and in particular, the, the diesel, ultra low sulfur, for example, below Mexico is very hard to find, if yep. any, and we didn't want to have a, a vehicle with a def fluid or ultra low sulfur diesel. So this Got is a it. super simple, very uh, easy to find the fuel, but another most important thing is uh, uh, I can fix it. I mean, it's so easy. There's no electronics, nothing much that you can do. You just have to troubleshoot, use your, 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 your brain and you'll get to the problem. And I think that's so important, like for Absolutely. world travel. I mean, Absolutely. if you can't fix it yourself, you might be in a really tough situation. Absolutely, yes. Cool, well, why don't, uh, if you don't mind, maybe show us like two or three things that are, that are really unique to this vehicle. Yeah. Maybe they could be like innovative things that you came up with that you haven't seen. So you oh, had yeah. to, you know, create a solution for yourself or just yeah. something that's unique and out there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two or three things, okay. not necessarily the most important things that you do in, a, in, in an overland, because you, you see tons and many, but a few things that we really engineer well, I think. Okay. Number one, uh, I would say this is more than engineering, is a treat. Okay. For the, for the, uh, as you can see, we are no longer exactly spring chickens with my wife. <laughs> we decided to install uh, Shilman seats. They are very, very nice and comfortable. And, uh, and again, I've been asked many times, what is the single most important uh, thing that you want to buy in your next build? I'm sure I would say Shilman seats because you can stay there for 10 hours and uh, you just don't realize you've yeah, been there for 10 hours. So very, okay. very interesting. Okay. The second thing is, is the platform itself, of course. It, it is, a, as, a, as we said before, is an F-350 with, as of today, 44,000 original miles. That is a, a sort of a unicorn. It's almost impossible to find. This is, will what, go forever. What year is it? It's 1997. And it has 44,000 original yes. miles. So wow. that's an immense asset. Yeah. The other thing that we decided to do is uh, we, for a number of reasons, we decided to remove completely from our build the propane. Uh, again, two are the main reasons, but there are many more. One is at high altitude, the propane can give you some hard troubles. And uh, the second thing is uh, very often in all our overland trips, we've always found someone in troubles in trying to refill the gas cylinders and, and so on. So we removed completely, we beefed up the, the power systems and we move, moved into all induction. So we have an induction unit here outside. We love to stay outside even if we did manage to care quite a lot the inside, but staying outside for us is a must. So we decided to do this. And of course, we, we installed the 600 solar watts uh, and that is more than enough to satisfy all the induction uh, that we need for, uh, for our cooking and so on. And how big is your battery bank? We have two lithium batteries and 340 amp hours uh, as of today. And because so it, it's lithium, it's all usable. All 80% is usable. So right. very. Um, we did try to crash the system even in, 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 in the worst conditions. We've never managed to get below the 70% of our battery capacity, cool. which is what we wanted to have. All right. And then here, a lot of custom, of course. This is a 
uh, I don't know if we mentioned, it, this was an ambulance, and uh, the ambulance normally uh, has barn doors inside, in, uh, behind. Yeah, for getting stretchers yeah. in, in and out of the back. And uh, we, we, were, we were not happy with the situation because what we wanted to do is to be able to open the window from inside without necessarily opening the, the doors and, uh, and exposing uh, storage space. So we just removed everything. We did laser, laser cut uh, a piece. We uh, installed a, a turn overland window and then we created this uh, really, really nice uh, storage space that we can open, we can use uh, without any troubles. And at the same time, uh, as you can imagine, there are not tire carriers for ambulances, so we had to custom make all of these. And uh, this was uh, also laser cut and welded by, uh, with the help of a friend of ours. Very nice. And uh, the last little thing that I want to show you, uh -huh. this is probably the the single most over-engineered uh, shower mount in the world. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool because what we wanted to do is uh, avoid adding any space uh, by the side of a build. Because again, we go off-road, we didn't want to hit Right, you don't want to uh, have and, risk and, damaging things on the sides exactly. and yeah. So basically, this, uh, when it's deployed, it, it is like this. And when it's closed, you pivot. There is a, a nice and interesting move here and it will sit exactly here. So, and then we latch. And, and, and the shower will stay here behind the bill, no problems. And, and that is also something that we are really proud of. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah. Well, Antonio, thank you so much for Pleasure. giving us a tour of this incredible build. And um, I, I saw you're planning to hit the road in 2023, maybe. I'm not Hopefully, sure. yes. So uh, we'll look forward to seeing what you and your wife get up to. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we're here at the Red Arc booth with uh, a very uh, well-known man. This is Sean. People call you Shano. Sean Shano, that's right. Yeah. Shano. Yeah, yeah. So I've heard someone describe you as a god of overlanding. Well, no one in Australia has said that before, but <laughs> fair enough. I mean, we, we live and breathe overlanding, okay. what you guys call it. We call it touring down under. Touring down. Um, it's all just about getting outdoors, remote places, and exploring. That's that's what it's all about, really. Awesome. Well, yeah. it's really exciting that you're here. I know, at, like the turnout at the booth to meet you has been really cool to see. Yeah. Um, and you're you're really tied in with Red Arc. Tell me, like, what your relationship is with them. Like, how do you how do you work with Red Arc? What's, so, what's the deal? I've been using Red Arc products for about 15 years now. They're, they're very big in Australia, and it's just a very quality product that it just works. And we go to some very remote places in Australia where you could be you know, up to six days before you see another person. It's, it's so far off the grid. When you're that far away from civilization, you need gear you can trust. That's why we use the Red Arc stuff. Um, all my 12 volts actually Red Arc. And um, it just it's, makes ca camping so much more comfortable when you've got a good 12 volt system in your, in your rig. Yeah, well, I mean, I definitely like, when I hear Red Arc, I just think like bulletproof electrical infrastructure. 100%. Um, yeah. And so one of the exciting things about uh, having Red Arc at the event this year is they just launched their uh, AC inverters for the North American market, yeah. which is going to be 120 voltage because we have 120, 120 here. Yeah. Um, and we've actually got, got the new inverter right here, the 2000 watts, pure sine wave. Um, tell me maybe just a little quick overview of uh, what's your experience with their inverters. Like, yeah. Yeah, sure. I've been running their inverters for a long time. I've actually got this exact same one in my 200 series Land Cruiser. Okay. Um, I find them so great when you're off the grid. You, you can run obviously the same sort of household items that you, you know, you, you wouldn't associate normally taking out into the bush or out into the countryside. Um, so I've been using mine for all sorts of stuff. For one, we, we film a show in Australia, so recharging camera gear, even sensitive equipment like some of our big batteries, the V-Lock batteries on the bigger cameras. Um, it can handle everything like that. Plus, some of the mod cons, some of the things that make camping a bit more comfortable, I run an induction cooker, right, nice. which is, you know, it's a little bit embarrassing to say, but it's just so handy. And the fact I can run that straight from the inverter, um, some of the guys are running blenders these days, microwaves, um, all sorts of stuff. I've actually been out in the bush before, broken things, run an angle grinder straight off my Red Arc inverter, and um, done some bush repairs with an angle grinder in the middle of the bush. I mean you know, it's worth its weight in gold. That's awesome. Well, in Australia, you certainly don't have any shortage of sunlight. Yeah. So to be able to get power from a non-consumable thing, you know, get solar and, and run stuff like that, do repairs in the field, maybe run a blender to make drinks, yeah. do your cooking without propane, like that is so cool. It really is, man, it really yeah. is. And that's that's how I sort of set my 12 volt up. I've got the solar panel on the roof. I'm running uh, lithium, like Red Arc lithium battery. And then with, with the inverter as well, you just got every base covered. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for giving Appreciate me the rundown. It. No it's a worries, pleasure to man. meet you, and I hope you have an awesome time at the rest of the event here. Yeah, it's hard not to. Yeah. Cool, man.
Right, so uh, right now we're here inside a brand new expedition vehicle that we're really excited about. It's called the Wanderbox. I'm here with Mike Barnwell, who's the CEO and founder of this project. Um, Mike, uh, this thing is pretty unique looking from the outside. Um, it's got some really interesting infrastructure, construction going on. Um, tell me a little bit about Wanderbox. Who did you create this vehicle for? Um, you know, kind of give me the rundown on it. <clears throat> sure, Matt. As uh, my wife would like to say, I'm a serial camper junkie. And so after having pretty much every type of camper there is um, and needing something different, I um, for our, our long uh, mountain bike rides in Gooseberry Mesa near Zion and stuff like that, and being able to sleep comfortably and get around and not get stuck on those bent night clay roads and stuff like that. Wanted something that was both capable and comfortable. And um, with the recent release of Starlink's portability feature, th we think that's a game changer to allow people to come out and live uh, and work and play, as our motto goes, uh, wherever they want, wherever their f favorite places are. So that's sort of the, the genesis of it. Um, I had a long uh, storied career in technology that I retired from last year. And when that wound down, I, started, I cranked this up, um, hired a, a core team of folks to, to kick things off. We have a, a manufacturing facility in Mead, Colorado, just north of Denver. And um, that's where we build these. We built this pr prototype starting a few months ago. And as you can see, it's almost finished. Um, we worked hard to get it ready for the show, but we got a few details left. And um, it's really designed to help people live off grid and take advantage of the whole work remote, work anywhere thing that COVID helped fuel and that housing prices uh, and all of that is driving the technology angle with Starlink, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So for those of us who would rather be out mountain biking or paddle boarding or rock climbing or something and be able to, to jump on a Zoom call and then go back to doing whatever you love and that's really you know your goal in life, um, I think it's a game changer and I didn't see anything in the market that uh, was delivering on that. Cool. Um, so. Okay. Well, it certainly feels comfortable. The space is big. Um, I mean, I think it's got more moving, you know, space to move around in and live in than my 25 foot Airstream, which feels like a lot for, I live on the road. And so it's really compelling to me. And especially the Starlink angle, uh, I think like a lot of people are making they're, they're buying it, they're getting out there with it now that it works in a mobile capacity. Yep. Um, so that's cool. Well, so, okay, so that's that's who the vehicle's for, and that makes a lot of sense to me. Tell me a little bit about what makes this unique uh, when you compare it to, let's say, an Earth Roamer or something like that, because it's kind of in a similar class of vehicle size-wise, I would say, from the outside. But right. I saw some interesting material here. You've got um, this. Tell me about this. Sure. So. <laughs> Um, the design goal for the, uh, the shell of the vehicle was to be light and strong. So we did a lot of research and we found some companies that produce honeycomb aluminum. Um, and that's what this is. You can see this is the one inch that goes in the wall. That's the wrap on the outside. And we, we uh, make a composite sandwich with a, a two inch layer of insulation called polyisocyanurate which is the highest R value fo uh, foam insulation like this that you can get. So we combine those to make the wall. We can tie in, there's an issue with, with camper designs called thermal bridging. And what happens is if you put a steel bolt through something like this to connect, say, those cabinets, then heat and cold go in and out. They, so they, the, the heat and the cold go in and out, but also condensation causes issues. So the way we get around that is we use uh, gas, uh, excuse me, glass filled nylon bolts that go through this and, and they break that thermal gap so that it anchors into the uh, honeycomb aluminum, gives you about a thousand pounds of shear capacity for the weight so you can hang plenty of stuff from it internally uh, and it gives you a really great insulated shell. So okay. strong, insulated, light. Likewise on the floor you can see <clears throat> where we have two inches of honeycomb, then the two inches of, of insulation, then a fiberglass I-beam, uh, basically what is in essence um, fiberglass plywood called kusa, an inch of that and then our flooring. So this is about, what I showed you a minute ago for the walls is about R15, this is about R25. Wow. And then the roof is the same as this, except it's thicker, a little bit thicker 
um, uh, honeycomb. So okay. that's about R20, we believe, with the sub-ceiling and the insulation in that. We have bat insulation where we don't have plumbing and Got such it. in that here. That would fill these voids. Yep. Okay. So <clears throat> it's, it's, it's different um, from uh, solutions like Earth Roamer because we're going after a different design goal. We're trying to make it so you can stay out for long periods of time. So we have large water capacities. For example, we have um, large waste capacities, gray and black. We have 2,800 watts of solar on the roof, seven 400 watt solar panels. We have 24 kilowatt hours of lithium batteries. Wow. Um, so it's all designed for, for folks like you and I that like to get out and live outdoors to be able to stay out there. So you don't have to go resupply all the time. The 17 cubic uh, foot refrigerator behind Richard <laughs> is uh, so you can get all your vittles and goodies in there and not have to go back to the store in a couple of days and just stay out there. Enjoy that 14 day law from the uh, BLM where you can stay someplace for 14 days. Um, and then the comfort. So. You know, mm -hmm. tying in, this is a live edge bar that we've added in this unit. Saw that. Um, I haven't seen a live edge bar in a, in a camper like this before. It slides away, uh, sta uh, stairs come out to go to the uh, sleeper berth and the cab over, and then there's a path through into the cab. Okay, and what is the base vehicle that you chose to build this on? This is a Ford F600, and we chose that because it gives you gives us 2,500 pounds more payload than the F550. Yep. Cool. Well. Um, that's a great overview of what you're doing here. Uh, I, I'm really excited for you to get this finished and see where it ends up. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for chatting with me today. I appreciate, appreciate it. it. Yeah. Thank you.